first off, congratulations on the Handy Award nominations, right? Thanks again. Very good. It's, it's a, 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 I'm, I'm sure, a distinct honor. You're nominated for Female Artist of the Year and Blues Instrumental. Uh, right, vocalist, female vocalist. Female vocalist. Um, is it is it still exciting for you to get nominated for this kind very, of stuff after doing what you very do? Very much, yeah. yeah. Is one of these nominations more important to you than the other? No, not really. Uh, the competition in both categories is impressive and mm -hmm. uh, probably Either way. overwhelming. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, let me get back up a little bit here a few years. When you first started um, working as, as a musician, you didn't start out playing the blues, is that right? No, gosh, I started out playing uh, kitty classicals, if you want to go all the way back <laughs> <laughs> to when I was five. Um, I played folk music in uh, the early college years and uh, ragtime before that at home, my grandmother's music, and um, I played rock and roll mm -hmm. in college and post-college and country when I first moved to Austin in a band that really kind of gave me my start. Right. And uh, then gradually, through that band, moved more into R and B, more back home, and now I'm all the way. Do you ever see yourself? <laughs> do you ever see yourself going back and touching on any of those? On those oh touches? yeah, I, I dip in and out of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the country, it's hard to escape. You know, right. I, I used to say you could get uh, over being an axe murderer quicker than you could <laughs> get over being a country musician because for years you know people would call me by the name that I had back in that band and and request what? those songs and I, I still get that and I still and I'm glad can dip into you know my old country repertoire I can go play some gigs um, or just throw something in and I really do love western swing right and I play some gigs with friends in Austin sometimes in Western Swing bands. And it's as enjoyable, whatever form you're in into at the yeah. moment. It's just, it's just as fun. Um, so you mentioned you moved to Austin, I guess, in the 70s, correct? Yeah. What, what, what drew, you, drew you to that city? It was at that time just a natural move and, and a necessary move. I was living in Baton Rouge and had lived there for five years, and there was... Um, I need to be somewhere more liberal, mm -hmm. and uh, in the South, Austin was the place to go. And really, we were on our way to San Francisco, <laughs> and we just stopped in Austin to visit friends, and we had some car trouble. So I broke <laughs> down there, and I never left. It was fate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how has how has that city like influenced your development as a musician? Oh, tremendously in every way. Um, the people that I met there. Um, gradually moved me along. I mean, in, even in the time that I was playing country mm -hmm. and I met some great players and inspirations then, I mean, that's where I got to meet the Texas Playboys mm -hmm. and just the people that I played in that first band with. The, you know, we're still all friends and uh, they helped me to, you know, take this step, play right. here, quit your day job, right. you know, <laughs> learn this song. Um, but then, um, as time changed Austin and musical styles changed, you know, right after the country thing, that's when the blues exploded in Austin, and that's right. when Stevie came out, and that's when the Thunderbirds came out. And I met Angela, and I met Lou Ann, and uh, we just had a, a big group of people who worked together. Mm -hmm. It's always been that way in Austin. And that, around what year was it that you started to gravitate towards the blues yourself and your music? Well, in 75, I started playing just a little bit of everything. And mm -hmm. by 80, I decided I was just going to get a band of R&B players that played more than I did or, you know, that right. had been playing just the blues and hadn't been fooling around with all these other styles. And uh, I did. I got uh, a great drummer, Roddy Colonna, who played mm -hmm. with all these bands who you know, from Dallas, an old friend of Stevie's, and Pat Whitefield, who plays with Anson and the Rockets now on right. bass, and uh, some great guitar players, Kenny Ray, and Danny Karen, who just uh, recently, most recently, was playing with uh, Charles Brown for oh, many years. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah, I had a um, band. Tell me about how Katie Webster influenced your music. The worst thing about meeting Katie Webster was that it took me so long. <laughs> that. Her being from Lake Charles and me from 20 miles away from Vinton, that I didn't meet her when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. That would have really, I think, changed my life. Yeah. And uh, when I finally did meet her, I thought, here is my godmother. <laughs> here is my influence. Here's somebody that I will be able to learn from, and it's true, and I have. 
for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So really, I only regret that I only knew her for that a short, short time. time. And she passed away recently, right? Yeah, Just last, last year. year, I believe. Has that like affected you in, in the and way that you're, you're writing and whatnot? Year. Um, well, it just makes me miss her. It makes yeah. me appreciate more the people that I do know and that I do have and try to uh, use my time better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a, uh, almost, it's sad how something like that make, opens your eyes to these kinds of things, but it's, I'm sure it's a, a yeah, very important. It um, back in January, I read that you had replaced a couple of members of your band, correct? Yes. You, you, you added Brad Andrew and Pat uh, Boyack? Correct? Yes. How, is it difficult to incorporate or integrate new members to a pre-existing band that's been playing together for, for, for a while? Well, I love uh, stability. I loved <laughs> uh, for a while I had a band, you know, I had the same guys for seven or eight years. I've had the same bass player for 18 years. Mm -hmm. But um, after that group that was together for eight years started gradually coming apart, I've replaced them over time. And, and now, over the last three years, I've made quite a few changes. And this last time, every time it kind of hits you like, oh man, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? If I run through all of the possibilities, am I going to find somebody crazy enough to live the way I live yeah. and <laughs> think that this is, a, you know, the thing to do? And so I have about 15 minutes of serious self-doubt. And then I get on the phone. <laughs> I start calling people and people start calling me. And I'm telling you right now, I couldn't be happier. This, I out. love these guys. And every time you do a change like that, somebody brings something unexpected and usually positive yeah. to the table. And that's what has happened. Has there ever been a time where you've like, you know, a change that hasn't worked out? Like a change oh, yeah. in the lineup? Oh yeah. Is that awkward to have to like go listen? <laughs> yeah, this is not working. And usually when somebody comes in, you say, you know, we're gonna do this for three months. So if you have something else going on, don't burn any bridges. I never actually haven't in years said, okay, you have to move to Austin right. right now to work with me because if it doesn't work, I don't want anybody, you know, sleeping on my couch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and mad at me too. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a bad combination right there. In your house and angry, that's not good. <laughs> um, when you released uh, Sing It, that was, I think that was, that was the last record yes, you released, correct? Um, you, you, pair, you were paired with two women that you'd been fans of for most of your life, correct? Who were those women? Irma Thomas and Tracy Nelson. And Irma, you know, it's the, she's the first in, in my book of mm -hmm. uh, people who have influenced me. Uh, because, for one thing, she was early on an influence. I saw her here when I was about 13 years old. Uh -huh. A big package show at the Municipal Auditorium. Mm -hmm. I don't remember anything else about the show, <laughs> but I remember Irma. And how did, I did how did you how did you when did you first meet her? Um, actually, on Mother's Day of 1975, which is kind of weird for me to remember <laughs> that, but it was at a, a little lounge in Abbeville, Louisiana. My college roommate and I were down there to visit Bobby Charles, mm. and I don't know if you know who Bobby Charles is. He's the songwriter that wrote "See You Later, Alligator." and right. walk into New Orleans and I don't know why I love you like I do and wow. the jealous kind and just, you know, uh, since he was a teenager has been a, a great songwriter and, and you know, friend and hero of mine. So we were down there to visit him and we passed this lounge and it said, first of all, the name of the lounge was Moutons and that's my maiden name. Uh. So we both looked over and then Irma, it was Irma on the marquee. So in the middle of the afternoon. So wow. we pulled over and uh, <laughs> took a little detour <laughs> and met her. And the reason I remember so well the year is that I was pregnant <laughs> and uh, just, you know, barely. And uh, that's when I actually got to shake Irma's hand and wow. say hello. And, and here you are, and almost, you know, what, almost 20 years later, you put out, finally put out a record mm -hmm. with her. Was that experience what you expected it to be? And working, more. Working more. And more. First of all, from the first time I met Irma, I was struck with her, with how warm she was. This roommate of mine, who is still a close friend of mine, they remind me of one another. Mm -hmm. And when I finally met Irma later and we sat and talked and everything, I called my friend Margie and I said, <laughs> I feel like I've met, you know, another one of our sisters, you know. Oh, it's, wow. uh, it's like a, she's that warm. And, uh, and so, yeah. You know, over the years, we got to be closer and closer. We played gigs together. Tracy had somewhat the same experience with Irma. First heard her music and then sought her out down here in Louisiana and recorded her songs and um, has always stayed close to her. So, And then I, Tracy was an influence on me. 
there were uh, years when I was first playing music in Austin and wanting to get on the radio, and I'd hear Tracy on the radio. I go, <laughs> no, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> so uh, we uh, all got together, played gigs together, and then got this got opportunity the to record. Who else would you want to get in there and make a record with these days? Oh goodness. Well, I've worked some with uh, Dr. John with Mac Rebenac mm -hmm. and uh, uh, more more Mac. Right, <laughs> would right. Be real good. <laughs> uh, Randy Newman. I, I I don't know. I've got. You know, certainly big heroes. I don't know whether they would be matches like Etta James, you know, where we could do anything together, but... Um, well, that would certainly be exciting. Yeah, she's another major influence. Yeah. So have you been in, in the studio lately? Any plans to, to record? I've been or? writing, mm -hmm. and I'm overdue for a record. I've been promising one for, oh, now two years, I guess. <laughs> I'm close. Are you ready to get in close to getting yeah, there? Yeah, I'm close. How, how do you think it'll be different than your last like solo effort before you did the... the uh, well, I'm hoping that I get some... Um, some new grooves, you know. Uh, I'm out there searching for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, things that excite me, and uh, without being too, you know, uh, off the wall with it, I'm hoping that there's some new grooves and some interesting stuff. And they may be old grooves that are new to me. But right. <laughs> I'm excited about uh, all the exploration. Uh, my ears are wide open. Very good. Very good. Um, what do you What do you think of the notion that musicians need to suffer for their art? Well. I think in some ways, even if it's only on a uh, superficial level, <laughs> people, m musicians do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have to show the signs of the struggle. And if it's only in applying yourself to your craft, that's one way. Um, you know, there are none of us in modern times who can claim, you know, we're the, maybe the third or fourth generation of blues musicians who have claimed to um, pick cotton or, you know, come up that hard, although some have. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, life is, uh, you, you can't ever look at somebody and say they've had it so easy, you know, they have no right, right to right. sing the blues because that's, you don't know what's going on in people's lives. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, so what's next after Jazz Fest for you? Well, the summer's busy. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful summer of festivals and, and dates, uh, uh, very active and I need to be writing. <laughs> right. <laughs> New material on these dates and the festivals uh -huh. you're playing? Oh, yeah. Very good.